Lesson 3, Setting Up and Solving Proportions. Now that we're comfortable with equivalent fractions, let's use the magic formula to see how it really keeps us organized when we're working with proportions. So right here, I'll write down the magic formula again. a over b equals a over b. Let's look at box A for our example. It says, a store has nine shirts for every three jackets. How many shirts are there if a store has a total of 18 jackets? And remember, our magic formula is A over B equals A over B. The problem here is, though, that we don't have A's and B's. We have shirts and jackets instead. So I'm going to use S for shirts and J for jackets. I'll write down S over J equals S over J. Be sure to leave space in between because we're going to be writing numbers next. So here, a store has nine shirts. Where does this nine go? And it goes with S for shirts, so write it down here. Next, a store has nine shirts for every three jackets. Where does that three go? And it goes with J for jackets, so write it down. Let's just double check. A store has nine shirts for every three jackets. Nine shirts for every three jackets. So I know this makes sense. Let's keep reading. Here, how many shirts are there if the store has a total of 18 jackets? Where does that 18 go? And since it's 18 jackets, it goes with a J for jackets down on the bottom. So I'll write down 18. And now it's just an equivalent fraction. How did we get from 3 to 18? And we did that by multiplying by 6. And whatever you do down in the denominator, do the same thing in the numerator, times 6. 9 times 6 gives us 54. Write it down and circle it, and that's our answer. Now, what does that 54 mean? And since it's with the S for shirts, this 54 means 54 shirts. So I'll write down 54 shirts and box my answer. And again, the question was, how many shirts are there if the store has a total of 18 jackets? Did we answer that question of how many shirts? Yes, we did. There are 54 shirts. And this is why the magic formula is so important. It helps students organize their information and keep track of what they're doing. So in this problem, if students didn't use the magic formula, they might have written the 18 up here instead of down on the bottom, which would have given them a completely different answer. So the magic formula helps students set up the problem correctly, then it becomes just a matter of solving a simple equivalent fraction. Let's look at letter B. Here. Our garden has one short pea plant for every four tall plants. If there are 20 short plants, how many tall plants are there? And once again, we don't have A's and B's, but we do have S for short and T for tall. So my magic formula is S over T equals S over T. Remember to leave space in between. Take a look at the problem. One short P plant, where does that one go? It goes with S for short, write it down. For every four tall plants, where does the four go? It goes with T for tall, write it down. Let's just double check. A garden has one short P plant for every four tall plants. One short P plant for every four tall plants. I know this part makes sense. If there are 20 short plants, how many tall plants are there? Where does that 20 go? It goes with S for short. Not down here, it goes up here with the S. Write it down. Now it becomes just an equivalent fraction. How did we get from 1 to 20? And we did that by multiplying by 20. Do that up in the numerator as well as the denominator. 1 times 20 gave us 20. 4 times 20 gives you 80. Write it down and circle it. What does that 80 mean? It means 80 tall plants. So write down 
80 tall plants and box your answer. Let's take a look at one final example, and it's a tricky one. Look at box F. Here it says, how many days are there in four weeks? Again, we don't have A's and B's, but we do have days and weeks. So I'll use D and W. Let's write down days over weeks equals days over weeks. Remember to leave space in between. Just like we learned earlier, you need three values in a proportion in order to find the missing number. Here's the tricky part about this question, though. They only give you one of the values that you need. We're actually missing two of the numbers, so what are we going to do? Just remember, proportions are all about relationships. So think, and what do you know about the relationship between days and weeks? And we know that there are seven days in one week and those are your two missing numbers. So I'll write down seven days in one week, and now we have the three values that we need to solve the proportion. Where does this four go? It says four weeks, so I'll write it with a W for weeks. And now it's just an equivalent fraction. How do we get from one to four? And we did that by multiplying by four. Write down times four and times four. 7 times 4 gives you 28. Write it down and circle it. But what does that 28 mean? And it means 28 days. So write down 28 days. Box your answer. And let's see if we answered the question. How many days are there in 4 weeks? The answer that we got, 28 days. So this makes sense.